Two balls and a strike to count on Taylor. Reyes fires. Swing and a drive. Deep left field. This is way back. Walk the ball. Rip Taylor. What's up, everybody? Welcome into Dodger Heads, presented by DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel, joined today by Scott Gearman, and this is your 24-hour before the trade deadline rumor recap, some movement here as we record this on Monday morning, Scott. The Dodgers haven't necessarily gotten super involved, but let's get to some of the headlines here. The first one, the biggest one that I would say, uh, that I think we would both say was never a realistic possibility, but Shohei Otani officially staying with the Angels. That was a report that came out Monday morning. I was not surprised. I imagine you were not surprised. Does this change anything about the next 24 hours for you? You know, not really. Uh, Otani was kind of, it's not that he was a guy on the back burner. It's always when, it's, when you hear his name, you're always looking to, you know, inquire just like Friedman does. He said that he, he keeps tabs on every big name. It doesn't change much for me, but it's just so I'd really like to see what they do and what they put around Otani if they're willing to keep him or they're just, you know, looking to push that to next year to see if they can you know create a bigger package yeah he's got one more year of team control left so it's possible they trade him in the offseason it's possible yep. they trade him at the next deadline but for now Otani who is again a guy we weren't sure if the Angels would trade with the Dodgers but also I was skeptical whether he would be moved turns out he's staying put now on the actual Dodgers front there was a Dodgers move that was made on Monday morning the Dodgers send relief pitcher Garrett Clevenger to the Rays the primary motivation here was opening up a 40-man roster spot. Is it for Edwin Rios when he comes back? Is it for a potential trade down the road? But before we get into any of that, Clevenger, nice piece, fellow Oregon Ducks. So this hurts me a little bit. Jake Reed, DFA'd, and now Clevenger, two Ducks gone in like three days. But he had no space. He didn't really fit on this roster. He's a nice piece. Um, I, I imagine he'll be fine with the Rays. But what did you think about this move for the Dot? Was this sort of a something we'll all forget about, or is there a part of this that you like? Uh, you know, I, they're uh, both, yes. So, uh, the, you know, Clevenger, just it's purely a numbers game. You know, when they acquired him, I believe, from the Phillies, he was, you know, upside guy. There's things they like, just like the Dodgers always do. There's there's just stuff that you can fix and try to make him. Last year, he was solid. You know, he's he yeah. can be a solid arm. You put him in the right situation with the Rays, that's Definitely, if there's another organization that's not like named the Brewers, I would definitely pick the Rays as, you know, an org that can do the exact same thing, find something they like and make him effective in some way. So it's just a numbers game. He only has one option left. And, you know, and he was just it's just a numbers game. Yeah. Herman Tapia, uh, I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is the guy that comes back. This is a guy who does not need a 40 man roster spot, sort of a lottery ticket. But I know you dug into the numbers a little bit there. You know, like any move, there's some reasons for optimism, reasons for pessimism. But what, what's the upside with a guy like Tapia? So, you know, he's a he, big time, uh, you know, a lot of speed. And that's what's really something that you can look at. So he's 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 just like it is. He's a young guy, 18 year old. He made a big step from last year in 2021. He had an OPS just a shade under 600 at 589. And he just this year uh, playing with guys around the same age. He took a jump all the way to 952. So there's things to like. It's just. Down in rookie ball, you don't really know much what you're going to get, especially in the summer league and the Dominican. So it's it's a good move. Uh, if you're going to get something for a guy that just you needed to fill a 40 man roster spot, it's better than just outright getting rid of him. And it's just yeah. it looks like a good, you know, good piece to get back. Yeah, and it's you're always skeptical when it's the Rays sending you somebody because the Rays are very good at developing. But on the flip side. There's confidence in Andrew Friedman and the guys that they would pick. And so, like you said, they clear a 40-man roster spot. They add Tapia as a lottery ticket. So interesting there. Of course, this doesn't assume necessarily that there's something on the – on the. it's not like Juan Soto is now coming because Clevenger has been dealt and a 40-man roster spot has opened up. A Soto trade would probably open up a few 40-man roster spots, is my guess, based on the names who might be involved. But we'll see if that's a precursor to a bat or something else that the Dodgers might might make a move on. Last piece of news on Monday. It's not Dodgers specific, but it's Padres specific. The biggest trade so far today as we record this is the Padres adding Josh Hader from the Brewers. Really fascinating trade because as soon as this came across, I'm guessing most Dodger fans reacted the same way I did, which is great. The Padres have had to dip into their prospect hall. They aren't going to be able to go get Soto because they got Hader. Actually not the case. The, the centerpiece moving back was the Padres own closer in Rogers. They also added three prospects, Robert Gasser, Estery Ruiz, and Denelson Lamette, a guy who 
you know, prospect is maybe a loose term because he's been up in the major leagues for a couple of years. So <clears throat> as a Dodger fan, Hayter's very good. He's now on the Padres. That doesn't seem like a great thing. And yet the Brewers are in first place. So yes, they saved some money here. They've got Devin Williams, but maybe there's something with Hayter that they know that they're willing to move off of in exchange for all these pieces that they get. What did you make of this trade? Were you sort of in the same boot, boat assuming this was going to be a heavy prospect haul that then turned into basically major league ready guys? Yeah, a little bit of both. You know, Hater, we know what he's capable of for the last few years. He's been one of those, you know, one of, if not the best, most dominant closers in all of baseball. Uh, but if you've kept tabs on Hater the last, you know, month, he's really struggled. He's gotten hit around a lot and, you know, he's had a FIP of 816 since the Excellent. 3rd of July. So he, it's it's definitely uh, when Devin Williams is going one way, haters going the other. And it's really difficult to justify, you know, Devin Williams, I think, has over 30 straight scoreless appearances. So it's not that haters expendable. It's that if you're willing to get, you know, the Padres gave up their seventh best prospect. And then I think a 15 to 20 guy. And just like you said, Denison Lamette. And Taylor Rogers, just closer for closer swap. And Rogers hasn't been bad. So it's a it's for both sides, you can see the pluses, but I think that the the Brewers really made out with a you know really good return for Josh Hader. Yeah, I mean D- Daniel Starkin uh, of Dodger Blue, he tweeted out Craig Kimbrell in 2022, 4.25 ERA in 36 innings. Josh Hader in 2022, 4.24 ERA in 34 innings. Now, I think there's a little bit of tongue in cheek there. I don't think anybody is arguing that Craig Kimbrell is as good as Josh Hader. But as you said, the numbers have not been great of late. And so we'll see how that pans out for the Padres and for the Brewers. As you said, two teams that, that you know, very well could be in the postseason. Scott, as we wrap this up on a Monday, uh, do you think there's a move coming for the Dodgers? If you had to make a prediction, is it a bat? Is it Soto? Is it a starter? Is it a reliever? Do you think the Dodgers stay put? I think uh, Friedman's cooking. I think he's okay. got something going. He's gonna he's keeping tabs. He you know Mike Rizzo's playing chicken with everybody, and I don't think Friedman backs down. He's the Dodgers are well set up whether they make a big move or not for the next few years. So if they make a move, I'm excited. I'm ready. I think Friedman's got something in his bag. Okay. Well, let us know what you think below. Do the Dodgers have a move? There's lots of smoke around bats. We had a Dodger heads, <coughs> excuse me, post this morning where we talked about a number of those: Garrett Cooper, Brandon Drury, J.D. Martinez among the names mentioned. So make sure you check that out. And also just a programming note, again, if you've been with us the last few days, you've heard me say this a number of times. Tonight, Monday night, we are partnering with Playback to do a live virtual watch party with all Dodger fans. All you have to do is get a link. The way you get a link is go to Dodger Blue 1958 on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. You can find Scott on Twitter. Send us a message. We'll get you the link. We'd love to have you join us 645 tonight against the Giants live virtual watch party. You do need to get a link, though, ahead of time, so make sure to check that out. That's Scott Gearman at DodgerBlue.com. My name is Jeff Spiegel. As always, we appreciate you joining us. We'll see you soon. Lots of trade deadline action. We'll have tons of coverage, so make sure you subscribe, ring the notification bell. We'll see you next time.